systems often precludes uh, just simply pulling them all down and pulling all the ciphertext down and decrypting them. So in this paper, our main contribution is a generic algorithm, which we call, which with apologies to Omar Rheingold and the, the people who built the ZigZag product, we call the ZigZag. Uh, this uh, is a generic algorithm that solves the uh, problem of backwards compatible FPE. And the tokenization upgrade example that I gave before, we're gonna refer to as domain completion in the rest of the talk. And we proved that uh, the zigzag meets the natural security notion for this setting. And we also do a, a couple of analyses of the runtime of the zigzag and prove that it's uh, pretty fast uh, with all but negligible probability. And for a domain extension, which is the expanding, the, you know, the format expansion ex uh, example uh, I, we saw before, uh, we proved that unfortunately, like the natural strongest security you would want in this setting is actually impossible. And we give a new, uh, slightly weaker security goal, and we analyze the zigzag with respect to that. So mo a little more formally, a domain completion, uh, which, sorry, let me start that again. A domain completion setting involves FPE. And an FPE from a set D to itself uh, with key K is a permutation of that set for every key. So in domain completion, we c we're gonna call the old FPE, and we're gonna consider this a partial permutation, which is to say, it's a permutation that's only defined on a subset of its possible inputs. We're gonna call this F sub K star, and we're gonna call the domain of this partial permutation T. So these are, uh, concretely, you can think of these as kind of the plain text that were present in the system before this domain completion occurs. So the, the, the goal of the setting is to build a new FPE uh, ZZ sub K prime over the same set so that for all the points in T, the image under ZZ agrees with the image under F of the point. So basically, the, the zigzag, the, or the ZZ uh, domain completed cipher has the same uh, image for, for all those points in T. The security goal in this setting is the kind of the traditional one for FPE, which is strong pseudo-random permutation security. And this basically says that uh, the cipher is indistinguishable from a random permutation. Uh, but the slight twist for uh, domain completion is that we're gonna give the adversary knowledge of T. So uh, in, in the next few slides, in, rather than referring to the function F sub k star abstractly, we're just gonna think of it as a token table, which is basically just a big attribute value map as I described before. So there's an obvious approach to this problem, which is basically to use a tokenization scheme and a new FPE scheme in parallel. So when you, get a, uh, when you want to encrypt a point that was in the token table already, you just return its value. And if you want to return a point that's not in the token table, you just encrypt it with FPE. Unfortunately, it's not that hard to see that like you're gonna get collisions in the output. Uh, so this actually, this actually doesn't even preserve the permittivity of the set that we're trying to, uh, to encrypt. Uh, so we have to kind of discard uh, this basic construction. But fortunately, a slight tweak of this basic idea uh, gives us what we need. So the idea here, uh, this is the, the zigzag construction. Um, so the idea here is to use a kind of a modified form of cycle walking to repair the permutation on the points that collide. So there are two easy cases here and one a little more difficult. So the first easy case is if the point is in set T, then we're just gonna return its value in the token table. The next easy case is if the point is not in the set T and its image under the new cipher E doesn't collide with any of the images of the points in T. Uh, in that case, we're just going to return it because there's no problem and there's no, no permittivity is violated. The, the third case and the one that's a little more complicated is when you encrypt a point not in T whose image uh, collides with the image of some point in T. And here, what we're gonna do is basically decrypt to find the point uh, in T that caused this collision, and then we're gonna re-encrypt with E. We're gonna re-encrypt that point with E. So this is uh, slightly reminiscent of cuckoo hashing, if you're, if you're familiar with that, that data structure. So, the, how am I doing? So uh, just some analysis of this, uh, of this basic algorithm. So if, uh, if the set T is at most half the size of the domain D, the, uh, the zigzag algorithm runs in amortized constant time over a sequence of encryption and decryption queries. 
except with negligible probability. And the intuition here is that this, uh, this, this sampling uh, experiment that we're doing can be modeled as a kind of sampling without replacement experiment from combinatorics. And once you view the problem that way, you can use a, a standard tail bound on the hypergeometric distribution to bound the probability of having to, having to go through this loop a lot of times. And the last, uh, the last thing I'll say about the domain completion in the zigzag setting is that uh, the, the zigzag uh, in this setting uh, meets the strong pseudorandom permutation security goal that we want. Uh, and we prove this via reduction to the underlying permutations E and F. And this reduction is actually tight. There's no loss in security. So now we will discuss the domain extension setting in a little more detail. Again, the point of this domain extension setting is that we want to be able to encrypt points in the, the old set that uh, existed before the extension and the points in the new set, in the extension set. And we want to be able to do this while maintaining the ability to decrypt the points that existed in D before the update. And we want to do this all while preserving permutivity over the whole set M. So again, as before, we're going to call our old permutation F sub K star. And the new domain we're going to call M, which I've conveniently put in blue. And uh, uh, just, rem just remember that D is a subset of M. So M contains D. So uh, in this setting, we need uh, to build an FPE over the whole set M with the same kind of uh, preservation property that we had before. Uh, in particular, that uh, the image uh, of the points in T uh, is the same under ZZ and under the old cipher F. So uh, here we're not going to refer to a token table. We're just going to be a little bit more abstract. So uh, we have the old cipher F sub K star over the set D, and we have the uh, the new cipher E sub K over the whole set M. And uh, it's not that hard to see that zigzag actually works perfectly fine for domain extension. So the two easy cases stay the same, and the hard case where there's a collision works the exact same way as well. Which is not all that surprising because we never actually needed that the sets uh, were the same uh, in, the, in the zigzag for domain completion. Uh, the question here, though, is what security this achieves. And unfortunately, in the paper, we proved that uh, SPRP security is actually impossible for any domain extended cipher, the, a cipher that uh, m meets this functionality goal. And we proved this uh, with a distinguisher that's actually pretty simple. All it really has to do is take the points of T and pick some arbitrarily and just query them uh, over and over again. And see, uh, it sees whether any of the images of the points in the, that it's querying fall outside of D. And if, it do, if they do, then we, the distinguisher returns that it's in the ideal world. Otherwise, it guesses that it's in the real world. So the key intuition here is that for a random permutation, it's very unlikely for all of the images of all the points in, that it queried to fall in D. Uh, but for a domain extended cipher, this uh, has to happen. This happens basically with probability one because of the, the functionality of the cipher. And it, it, the probability that it gets fooled is this nasty kind of like quotient of factorials on the, in the upper right. So this is, is a pretty fast-growing function, uh, especially if uh, the set M is much larger than D. So the question here becomes then whether we can prove kind of any meaningful security about this setting. And we're going to do this uh, by weakening the security goal a little bit, and we're going to target indistinguishability from a slightly different ideal object. We call this definition strong extended pseudorandom permutation security. So intuitively, a permutation is an SEPRP if it's indistinguishable from a permutation uh, sampled uniformly but subject to our functionality uh, requirement. So the first theorem that we proved, uh, and it's a pretty simple one, is basically that zigzag uh, meets SEPRP security in the domain extension setting. The next one, which was a little bit tougher to prove, was that uh, S, uh, any SEPRP cipher uh, basically gives any adversary at most a factor of two advantage in uh, kind of message recovery games. 
So we proved this by taking a message recovery notion from, uh, from Bellaria et al.'s prior work on FPE, and we basically generalized it to accommodate the domain extension setting. And once we did this, uh, the only, in the experiment where the, uh, where the challenger picks a, a message, a hidden message, and gives the ciphertext to the adversary, and the adversary has to kind of guess the message by making encryption queries. The only thing that's really hidden from the adversary here is membership in T. So uh, you, like, this is like one hidden bit of information. You have to make up like, like, you have to make twice as many queries to make this up, basically. So in this paper, there we made some other, we did a, f a few other analyses of the, of the problem uh, that, we were, that we were considering. Um, the first is that if you, in, rather than weakening your security goal, if you weaken the amount of knowledge the adversary has about the setting, you can uh, modify the zigzag construction in a way that uh, actually achieves SPRP security. And unfortunately, I won't have uh, time to go into that in this talk, but uh, you can see the paper for more details. Another thing that's kind of worrisome about the zigzag is that it has variable timing for different uh, inputs, which in general is a, a pretty bad property for an, a cryptographic algorithm to have, like variable timing for, for different inputs. Uh, but we prove in the paper that the, the timing side channel here basically only leaks whether the point is in T or not. So. Since in the strongest setting, we assume that the adversary has this anyway, this, isn't, this is pr pretty un inconsequential. And an anonymous reviewer gave us an, a kind of an alternate construction of uh, achieving domain completion and extension uh, via a construction that we analyzed in the paper and we call rank and cipher unrank. So the, uh, the advantage of this uh, the alternate construction is that unlike the zigzag, it actually has fast worst case performance, but uh, the zigzag only runs uh, in uh, the only ha this, that is to say the zigzag only has bad runtime with negligible probability. So I don't see this as a huge advantage. And the disadvantage is that you have to do uh, a lot of pre-processing and uh, build a kind of a data structure that's specially made for this setting. So the storage overhead is a little high. It's uh, on the order of the size of the set T. And because this data structure is accessed in kind of like a point dependent way that's more granular than the side channel you get from timing, uh, we, we don't have uh, like a proof of this, but we conjecture that this would lead to uh, uh, like memory access pattern side channels in practice. So in summary, in this, in this paper we introduced kind of the idea of backwards compatible crypto, uh, which uh, I think is important because uh, the, the inflexibility of cryptographic primitives has been pointed out as kind of a serious practical problem before. Uh, if, you, if any of you were at crypto, uh, Brian Sniffen gave a really nice talk uh, where he pointed out that like the, the models that cryptographers use are very inflexible and don't always line up with uh, the, the practical considerations like key rotation, for example, is, a, is one that he specifically highlighted as a, pro a huge problem in practice that's not really modeled. Uh, in uh, academic work. And I think uh, this paper is cool because we kind of like make progress towards building more flexible uh, cryptographic primitives that can kind of be changed uh, after they're deployed. And we give a uh, generic algorithm that solves the problem of backwards compatible FPE. And we show how it uh, solves the problem of domain completion and domain extension. So the techniques that we develop in this paper are efficient, they're provably secure, and they solve real problems for practitioners. Thanks for listening. Any questions? So you say that the construction is efficient, but uh, as far as I understand, with a non-zero probability, your while loop never terminates, so the average complexity is infinite. So can you have a construction with a good average complexity? It does terminate. If the old scheme, the tokenization scheme has a fixed point, then if you decrypt, you, you continue to obtain this uh, fixed point and uh, you, the while loop, loop never terminates, right? I'd have to think about it. Maybe we can take it offline. It's, it's possible, it's possible, yeah. 